First, though, it's leading Daily Telegraph columnist Celia Walden. And a new apolitical campaign group spearheaded by the great Sharon Davies is promising to challenge every serving MP to answer the simple question, what is a woman, with their responses to be uploaded online for voters to see. <laughs> so let's hope they manage clearer answers than this. Sorry, lot. A woman can have a penis. <laughs> Nick, I'm not... I don't think we can conduct this debate with, you know... Sorry, have I, have I, get I offended this, you? Uh, no, 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 it's just... Uh, no, 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 I just... For the vast majority of women, this is all about biology, and of course they don't have a penis. We all know that. Uh, uh, is it is it transphobic? It, uh, look, I just... I don't even know how to start answering these questions. Women who are trans deserve to be recognised, and yes, you know, therefore some of them will have penises. Now, this new campaign comes as the Office for National Statistics is slammed for, quote, hugely overestimating the number of trans people in the UK on a recent census with the ambiguous wording of the question thought to have confused respondents speaking English as a second language into mistakenly identifying themselves as trans. Celia, uh, welcome back. Great to have you. Uh, I know you're really concerned about the census reporting, but just before we get to that, would you vote for your local MP if they were revealed to believe uh, that a woman can have a penis? I definitely wouldn't vote for anyone who can't answer the question primarily. I mean, that's my biggest concern. If you don't know, um, and if you're so tortured and so so cowardly that you can't even formulate an answer one way or another, then I'm definitely not going to vote for you. Um, but I mean, I think Rishi Sunak was the best. Uh, it, he, he gave the best answer, didn't he? Which was a, a, an adult female human being. Um, and actually, you, you know, once you've done that, people do leave leave you alone. But it's when when you watch the kind of torture that people get themselves into. Um, I mean, it's it's like something out of a sort of spoof. It's like something Dennis Pennis used to do, isn't it? Sort of questioning <laughs> yes. people with it. it just, it's almost it's like just... you can't believe it's real. You can't believe these are the people who are meant to be leading us. Uh, well, look, can we talk about these trans numbers, though, Celia? Because you've been digging into it this week and you think the ONS have actually massively over-exaggerated the number of trans people in the UK, which could have huge concerns given this is a uh, huge concerning repercussions, given this is a growing social debate. Right. Well, this is actually based off an inquiry that has been going on for some time, because I, I think the, the actual figures were released in January. Um, this is of the 2021 census. Um, and uh, academics at the time pointed out that the way that the question was worded had confused people whose, whose first language wasn't English. Um, and so there were various sort of boroughs, I can't remember exactly where they were, in London, for example, or other places across the country where people people um, sort of primarily uh, where a large percentage of people didn't speak English as a first language. Um, and in one of them, for example, <laughs> I think uh, one in five people were considered to be um, trans, which you just think <laughs> that's what, you know, as we know, that's obviously highly improbable. Um, and what concerns me is that this had to be pointed out um, and only now are we getting to the bottom of it with this inquiry that has that has actually concluded that there were there were flaws made in in the way the question was answered. Um, and then you have to ask yourself: Well, are they, were they was this intentional? You know, were they deliberately slightly misleading and confusing people um, because they wanted the figures to correlate to, to you know? The, yes. Yeah, you're pretty. Sure. You've written a great column for The Telegraph on this. I think it's out tomorrow, isn't it? And uh, you say that it's the London boroughs of Newham and Brent, which actually right. apparently have the highest proportion of trans people in the UK. Surprise, surprise. They also have the highest proportion of people who speak English as a second language. So I think uh, something very worrying was going on there. Uh, but look, I want to move on to this 
big sporting debate, though, Celia, because members of England's female angling team are now refusing to compete in the World Championship to protest the inclusion of a trans athlete in their team. So this is the male at birth athlete Becky Lee Birtwistle Hodges, who has been added to the squad despite their previous inclusion back in 2018, leaving their female teammates, quote, humiliated as England won bronze but were shunned by spectators and their fellow competitors. So, Celia, should Britain's uh, British Angling's governing body reverse this decision to ensure a level playing field? Well, I have to admit that I had to read this one quite carefully because I'm not really um, that keen an angler and I'm not entirely sure what 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 it involves. But as soon as I started reading about it, um, it was interesting that, for example, upper body strength, as once you think about it, you'd imagine, um, is a yeah. huge part. So how far you can cast um, is a, it, there's apparently a, a big difference. I think women can cast 70 Anyway, men can, can men can uh, sort of over cast over double Got doubly it. as um, so that because, because of, of that their sort of yeah. strength. Mm -hmm. Yes, which 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 makes sense. So so again, it comes down to the same issue we're having with other sports, which is um, you know that that they are perceived to be cheating. Um, where it, although it might be uh, on the surface a a, a a kind of boon for them to have. Um, uh, to have this kind of addition to their team, they they as as we saw previously, they were only perceived to be cheating in the sport, which nobody wants. Um, no. So so it comes down, and I do think that actually, you know, um, it, it should have been, it shouldn't have reached this level where no, they're shouldn't. refusing. It shouldn't. There just needs to be a blanket rule for the sport. You know, I don't care if it's angling or if it's netball. You know, there have to be biological men competing and biological women competing, perhaps a separate trans category. It's so obvious to me. But both sides of the story always here on GB News, Celia, you know that. So Jamie Cook, chief executive of the Angling Trust, said... Team selection is currently based on this policy, but our ongoing consultation with women's team members and managers, which will be a key part of our review, could see this change. This review is yet to be completed, and until it is, our policy remains the same. So perhaps, Celia, there will be change in the world of angling, but always great to speak to you. Celia Walden, must-read columnist with a must-read column in the Daily Telegraph tomorrow. Thank you so much.